And Mickey Z is going to speak in a little while. He will be properly introduced in a little while. But right now, he's just Mickey Z. Hello, New York City. Woo! Welcome to the 2014 Veggie Pride Parade. How many vegans we got here today? Make some noise if you're a vegan. Get loud if you're a vegan. Not bad for a bunch of protein deficient, militant, annoying, self-righteous people. All right, last year when I was up here, I had the honor of being introduced by my friend Eric. And now I'm gonna return the favor. Now I can tell you that I met him through a little something called Occupy Wall Street. I can tell you he's a photographer, a magician, an activist, and an all-around badass. But I'm just going to tell you that he's been a vegan since 1991. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Eric Walton. Thank you very much, Mickey. Thank you for that very generous and gracious introduction. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out here today. I am delighted to see such a robust turnout, despite the rather chilly weather. And uh, welcome to the Veggie Pride Parade 2014. Can I get a little noise, ladies and gentlemen? How about it? All right. Now, fantastic. Now, I have only five minutes in which to make my case to you this afternoon. Uh, I think that will suffice, but notwithstanding this very meager allotment of time, I would like, nevertheless, to offer the first two minutes of my speaking time to any person here today who is willing to stand up and make a public case in defense of cruelty, injustice, oppression, and exploitation of the innocent and defenseless. Do I have any takers? Going once, going twice, going three times, don't say I didn't offer. Now it's very telling to me that not a single person here this afternoon was willing to stand up and make a public declaration to the effect that cruelty, injustice, oppression, and exploitation of the innocent and defenseless are good and morally defensible practices. Could it be that anyone who professed such a belief would be considered a psychopath? I think so. Human beings, all mentally healthy human beings, instinctively recoil against the idea of cruelty. We have a knee-jerk revulsion against injustice and oppression. And if we know anything at all in our hearts, it is that exploitation is reprehensible through and through. We understand without having to be told that might does not make right. And that the strong and powerful do not have the right to exploit and oppress the weak and defenseless. And we recognize our own rights as human beings not to be victimized, brutalized, commodified, or enslaved. And these rights are codified and enshrined in our own laws. It is with very good reason that slavery is despised and reviled in all civilized societies. For what is slavery, ladies and gentlemen, but an expression of abject tyranny? And what are cruelty, injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of the innocent and defenseless, if not the hallmarks of tyranny? And it can be stated as an absolute certainty, can it not, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that all forms of tyranny are an anathema to everyone but the tyrant. So how is it then? ladies and gentlemen, that we who despise tyranny and who cherish liberty for ourselves should tolerate tyranny and deny liberty to our fellow creatures on this planet. What possible reason could we have to exclude from our moral consideration sentient beings who, like us, possess consciousness, feel pain, have intelligence, form social bonds, experience emotions, and who we have every reason to believe value their own lives every bit as much as we value our own. On the basis of what horrible prejudice or lack of understanding do we condemn by the tens of billions of animals every year to lives of insufferable misery and suffering? Yes, well, we are not ants, you understand, so we've got moral obligations and responsibilities of which ants are not aware, but thank you so much for your input. By what right, ladies and gentlemen, do we condemn animals by the tens of billions every year to lives of insufferable misery and suffering in factory farms, in zoos, circuses, and laboratories, where they are routinely mutilated, 
tortured, abused, and slaughtered. And their bodies, their bodies which belong to them and not to us. Their bodies are treated as mere commodities and machines. What gives us the right, ladies and gentlemen, to commit or condone these atrocities? Just who the hell do we think we are? Now, the relationship between Homo sapiens and the rest of the animal kingdom has more complexity and more nuance than I can possibly address in the course of a single five-minute speech. But I believe that the issue of what we eat with regard to animals can be summed up in a single, simple, and incredibly urgent question, which is this. Is it moral? Is it ethically justifiable to revoke the life of a living, breathing, sentient being for no other reason, for no other reason than that you have a certain fondness for the taste of his or her muscles, organs, and bodily secretions. I am here to posit this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, that the only rational and humane answer to that question is no. For once you have acknowledged that cruelty, injustice, oppression, and exploitation of the innocent and defenseless are morally reprehensible practices, that they are the concomitants of abject tyranny, then the only appropriate response to the global animal byproduct industry is to reject it entirely and to go vegan. Thank you. For the sake of the animals, for the sake of the planet, and for the future of our own species, may the better angels of our nature prevail. Thank you very much.